Well, let's just, let's go back to last week. I mean, did, did it feel like an out of body experience? Just the the game that you were having. Um, definitely did. Um, it's a real moment. Every every I was just I just felt like I was in the zone. Mm-hmm. How early in that game do you feel that? Like at what point does that kick in for you? Uh, I would say just when the ball, you know, just getting the rhythm. Um, it was like my first game ever uh, getting targeted like that. So I'm not really uh, too used to it. Just getting the ball and just just staying locked in. Do you have games like that in college? I think I've had uh, one or two for sure. If, were you expecting this as the game's coming down the stretch that like, you're expecting the ball every single play at that point? And then uh, when it's not coming, do you get nah, it? Nah, I, just, I just run my routes to win. You know, and if the ball's coming, then uh, I'm trying to catch it. So Kittle said, said that when Kyle kind of sees a guy that has it going, he decides to like go there, and that was you the other day. What do you kind of feel on that? And can you add to that or how you felt about the fact that Kyle targeted you that, that much? Um, you know, uh, our team was used to making plays, so, you know, Kyle, the ball just kept finding me, man, you know, right? it just comes from playing hard, that's what I think. I just wasn't in the right head space, um, you know, just had a, a hard fall game with my brothers, man, we uh, took a loss, and uh, I just wasn't in the right head space, didn't think I had the right answers for you all. The, uh, the, the one catch that you had where you basically had to climb over a, a defensive player. Oh, yeah, top rope. <laughs> <laughs> top rope. Yeah. Tell me about the play, just what you saw and how you uh, did it. Just uh, running the space, uh, saw the ball in the air, just attacked it. You just kind of described your, that's your style. Is going to yeah, just go get the ball. Just go get the ball. Did the Rams, DB, say anything to you during the game? No, nah, they said they respected me. Um, that's kind of been the theme of the whole season so far. I, we haven't had any DB chirpers yet. Do you feel like you've taken your game up to a, another level? I mean, it seemed like you were locked in even in the Super Bowl. I'm always locked in. Uh, you know, that's just, uh, I, honestly, I go to sleep at night, you know, thinking about this last game because, you know, I don't want to disappoint the next one. Uh, I'm not saying I got to go for 175 every week, but uh, just making the best out of every opportunity. And well, what's your, your reaction to being named the FedEx Air Player of the Week? Man, it felt great. Uh, that's another out-of-body experience. <laughs> man, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see the award, man. Where, where's the trophy? Let's go. <laughs> so you, you mentioned the word opportunity. So much of this game is getting those opportunities. Do you feel like when you capitalize like you do, that there, there are more that are going to follow that, more chances to keep doing your thing? Man, I don't know. I'm not a coach. I'm a player. So uh, I just try to make the plays when they come my way. Hello, everybody. Yes. Was I limited yesterday? Uh, I didn't yes. feel like it. No, very excited to play football. You were limited today, uh, allegedly. <laughs> Reportedly. I, you know, I think, I think you know, there have been some circumstances that have happened this year, so we're just trying to cover our bases and be as honest as possible. But no, I'm feeling fantastic. <laughs> hey, Braden. Do most reporters have their shirts on when they cover me, Brandon? <laughs> Can I back up just a little? You want me to back up? No, no, you're good. Oh, Johnny, okay. I don't want you to move. No. George, was, was, did, you, did you hurt that in the, in the game? I know Minnesota has not been your favorite service, and I know they changed it, but uh, was there, was there any residue from that? You, you know what? Um, I, cr- I had, like, lower body cramps, uh, continued cramping, so that was, like, my entire third quarter. Got IV, came out, kind of hit me again at the end of the game, fourth quarter. And uh, it was really sore all day Monday, Tuesday. Got a bunch of treatment on. I went out to practice on Wednesday and just wasn't feeling right. And so then after practice on Wednesday, we got an MRI and uh, I had a grade one hammy. And so we're not really sure. Like we thought I was going to be 100% fine and just ended up not. So that's how that turned out. How's that new surface much better? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to blame the surface for a hamstring. I'll blame Brock for throwing the ball over my head. <laughs> <laughs> How often have you had to have a an IV throughout your career, college? Uh, that, During a game? Yeah. That was actually the first time I've cramped in a football game since high school when I played both ways. So, it was just hot in there, yeah. I would say. So, George, did you, you didn't make the trip to L.A., did you? Unfortunately, no, I did not. What was it like watching Jawan's show oh, on TV? That was really fun. I thoroughly enjoyed watching Jawan. Um, it was just fun. Uh, the fun thing about, you know, when you're like, you miss it on the sideline, like, I hate not being there. I love being a captain. Like, I like being there because also, 
you know, I got three tight ends that were playing that you know haven't really played a lot of snaps as a 49er, so I would love to be there for that. But being able to watch the TV copy and like the, the close-ups on like his emotions and stuff like that, like I see that every day in person. But to be able to like to see how the world gets to see it was very very cool experience because you see how much that guy loves the game, how he competes, how good of a player he is. So that part was fun. The rest of it I absolutely just hated. Uh, it was awful. Besides, I got a lot of good like tailgating foods, so that was kind of fun. Uh, besides that, wasn't that exciting for me. Do you take it all in, or are you up and yelling and? Get... I'm definitely not like on my feet too often. Uh, it's more of like a stressful pace back and forth, yeah. and then I'm trying to follow along on the call sheet on my iPad. Okay. So that's kind of fun, but most of the time I'm just sweating a lot. And what about Brock Purdy's performance? Oh, Brock did a fantastic job. I mean, uh, he just continues to stack really good games after each other. Um, gets the ball, gives his guys opportunities to make plays. And, and you know, uh, they had great stats. The running stuff was incredible to watch, too. Um, what he had, like, ran 60, 76 yards on one play to gain three yards. A little dramatic, in my opinion, but that's Brock for you. Um, besides that, no, he just he played a really good game. It was fun to see that. So can I follow here. up on that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Fred Warner actually said, you know, I don't know why people think they need to see Brock Purdy do much more without his guys out there mm -hmm. to show that he's a legit quarterback. Do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think Brock's game speaks for itself. Uh, I think if you know football and you watch the game, it makes a lot of sense. And you also see all the, like all the former football players, they got the quarterbacks that played that are now talking. Um, they like, hey, Brock's a fantastic quarterback. I don't know what you guys are saying. And then you have guys who've never played the game talk about how he's, you know, just got good guys around him. You know, it, it make it make sense. I don't really get it. But after playing with him for three years now, I continue to say the same thing. He's a fantastic quarterback with good players around him. And he just takes advantage of those opportunities around him. But then when those guys aren't around him, he still plays at a high level. So when you're so looking at following the, uh, along on, on the call sheet, are, yes. you, are you able to predict at this point, Ooh, like Tony Romo, what, uh, huh. what, what Shanahan's going to go? Predict the play, no, but I like I know the plays based off of formations usually. Uh, you know, we like when you get to the week to week, um, like our plays are so specific week to week, so that like you know you see a certain formation with the certain guys next to each other. I'm like, okay, I know what play that is usually. So that was kind of fun. Like Juwan's first touchdown, I like saw the formation. I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be a touchdown. I can't wait for it. And then he scored. So that was pretty fun. Um, but I, I don't really like doing that. Did you know that Juwan was going to have a big game? Could you tell from the game plan? That he... Um, not necessarily. Um, I think Juwan just. You know, that's the thing. Like I've had games where I thought I was going to have 200 yards and three touchdowns, and I had one target. Um, and then I've had games where I thought I was going to have zero targets, and I've had 180 yards. So it's just like it's totally random. Kyle just kind of whoever he thinks is hot, he kind of goes with. And Juwan started off hot and then continued to be hot. Do you, uh, does anything jump out at you at, at the Patriots defense when you've been watching on film? Um, yeah, actually, I think they're incredibly sound in everything that they do. You watch their tape of like how their D line plays, and they do the exact same thing every single time. Like they're incredibly well coached. They want to get their hands on, extend, shed. They let the backs make cuts, um, and then they shed the blockers and they make the tackles. Um, they give you a whole bunch of different funky looks, kind of not like not as much as Minnesota, but uh, they do a lot of similar stuff and they try to confuse you a little bit. Look like man, they'll be in you know Tampa. Um, they do a lot of different stuff. Um, I think they're, they play with three safeties a lot, and I think the three safeties are all pretty damn good. Uh, they, they run around, they hit, they tackle, they fly around. Uh, I think, like, really good representation of it. Like, you saw them going to the Cincinnati and they won there. Mm -hmm. But I thought the game versus Seattle was really, really interesting to watch because, you know, they gave it their all in that. That was an overtime game, and so um, they're going to fly around, and, you know, they're not really scared of anybody. They're well coached. I think they have a really fun vibe there right now, too. Like, they're working hard, but they're enjoying themselves, and I think the coach hasn't played at a high level, so. I'm excited for the opportunity, really, just to get back on the football field, but looking forward to playing the Patriots. George is going to express like 10 bucks on the panic time, but are you one and two? Mm -hmm. Is there like, any sense of urgency about this game and not letting things like. Oh, dear. Um, I would say sense of urgency every day. Um, that's how I feel about it. I think if you're in the NFL and you don't have a sense of urgency, that's the quickest way to lose more football games. So I think our coaching staff has done a great job about reaffirming a sense of urgency like I, I don't think my sense of urgency is any different like I approach practice the same every day like I try to get better at one thing every single day and try to get better at the game plan and lock it in and I think our team does a really good job of that too and I think we had a grind of a practice today and I think our sense of urgency is 100% there and if it's not that's bad ball for the Niners and um, hopefully I can uh, 
Hopefully you can tell me who doesn't have a sense of urgency and I'll address it with them. George, what did you think of the blocking so a couple of Robert and Juice did this last week? Oh, I love seeing it. Uh, I thought Eric did a fantastic job of, you know, our offense is very complicated. Um, it took me a couple years to really get comfortable in it and for Eric to come in um, in the spring and then um, start in week three of the season and he played like 50 snaps. I was pumped for Eric. He, I thought he played really well. There's always things you can get better at, but he ran off the ball. He had good edges. He was uh, pretty solid in pass pro, like the plays that they counted and they needed him on. So that, that was exciting. And um, I'm just pumped for him to be able to get that out there. And it's also really fun. We work with a guy like Kyle uh, Juszczyk, who's really good at his job. He makes our job a lot easier, too. So when you work with him, it gives you confidence in yourself. So you can go out there and take more risks. And you can have a little bit wider hat placement because Juice is going to have your back on certain stuff. And for Eric to go out there and trust Juice in that way, and they you know, had a really good game together, it made me very happy. With Kyle Juszczyk, what does he bring to this offense that we don't see? Oh, um, let's see. I'm going to try to think of something different. Um, I think what I've usually said in the past was that Kyle is like he can fix any play. So like we have all these plays like that, like there's a combo between the tight end and the tackler, the tight end and the juice, and depending on how the defensive looks, like he can swap that out. And there's times that, that those blocks get messed up, and Juice will just fix it by blocking whoever's left. So I think he always does a good job of that. Um, I think one thing that you guys don't see is I think it's, it's Juice's first year as a captain, and I think that's like six years late. I really do. I think Juice has been a fantastic uh, leader ever since he's been here. Um, you know, he's not always the most vocal guy, but when he's in the huddle, uh, he brings a sense of confidence and calmness every single time he's in there. And the cool thing about Juice, too, he's in every fullback play. Uh, he does some tight end stuff. And then he's like, and on third downs, he does some running back protection stuff, running routes. Like, he's very accountable. I know Coach Fleury said the other day to him is that, uh, you know, he's one of the more clutch players that we have. Like, any time that you need him to do something, you can just rely on Juice to get the job done. And so I'd say his, his leadership and just his ability to get the job done is two things that he's just really good at. Have you talked to Last Christian? One. If so, how is he? Um, I think he's doing really well. I talked to him yesterday. Time zones are funny. I think I talked to him yesterday. Uh, but yeah, he's doing really solid. I'm just looking forward to seeing my good friend.